that, that I guess another side side question is uh, one of the most common points people make when they ask me questions is they'll say my soil is clay right and they always talk about that like it's the worst thing in the world yeah I um, mean my soil is just clay my soil literally is clay and rocks it's uh, what key three called builders loam right it's the stuff they use to make houses on because it's so damn hard um and uh sure i had to you know when i initially established the garden i worked some horse manure into it and some stuff like that and i i keep it mulched so there's always organic matter being added but the base uh there is mostly clay it's more clay than anything else and i mean anyone watching my gardening tours i i get good results every year and i don't i don't add fertilizers i mean I, the clay i think is an advantage it hangs on to the nutrients it hangs on to the water i mean you know sure you can't have like concrete you know clay to the point where it's concrete um but yeah what would you say to the gardeners that i mean i, I can only say it so many different ways but you know is, is clay a problem or is it you know is it is it well, a, clay clay can be a problem um but no clay can be a worse problem okay so if if you're gardening with no clay and you have sand and silt you got a real problem that's really hard to fix. Now you can dig in that soil really easily. So you might feel good when you dig and you can plant things really easily. On the other side of the street, you've got the guy with heavy clay. And the problem with heavy clay is it's really hard to dig in, right? So the minute you go out there with a the shovel, you push it in you go, oh God, I got awful soil. Well, that's sort of true. It's hard to dig in, but the soil isn't awful. The soil is actually pretty good. You, you have a better starting point than the guy with sand. The trick now is how do we loosen up that clay? Yeah. Right? And um, my first garden was really heavy clay. I, I wish I'd measured it because if I took a shovel full of the soil and you know threw it over, it just sat there as one big lump, right? It, it, I had actually had to chop it apart to make it smaller pieces. Yes. But it grew stuff. So the trick now is, is we got to loosen this up. And clay has two problems. One is it compacts really easily. So we have to overcome compaction. Whereas sand doesn't have that problem. It's really hard to compact sand. But clay compacts really well. And particularly in new subdivisions, everyone's clay is completely destroyed because of compaction. The second problem is that the builders have come along and taken the topsoil away and left you with the subsoil, which is the clay, but there's no organic matter in there. So we have good soil, which is the clay, but it's compacted and has no organic matter. If we add those two things back into the clay soil, we end up with good soil. Right? Yeah. That's not an easy, fast process, though, right? So if I had to choose between sand and clay, I'd rather have the clay because it's relatively easy to fix that. Sand, you'll never fix. You're, you're going to add organic matter to that over and over and over again, and it just disappears. It just sucks yeah. away, right? Whereas clay soil, over time, you can turn it into a good garden soil. Another topic. Uh, another key thing, you have a really good chapter, I think it was a chapter here, if it's not a chapter, it's a good section about water. Um, I really enjoyed reading it, very thought provoking. This is something you don't think about a lot. Um, so, and you, you, you got, you know, you, you got, you are, a, you are a chemist, you have a background of a chemist and you spoke, you wrote like a chemist in the section and to whatever is possible to make that work in this, uh, in this conversation, um, it's hard for me to dumb down because I don't have your background, but I found it probably one of the best explanations about water particles, soil particles, how they hang on to each other. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe you could just talk a little bit around how does water move through soil? How does soil hang on to water? What does all that mean? It's very important to understand for a gardener. The, the interesting thing about water is that it's a very unique molecule. And if if we look at it, we, we know it's H2O, but that's kind of a simple way to look at it. Water is actually a three-dimensional molecule that is kind of like a little magnet. So one end is positive and the other end is negative. Okay. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but it's absolutely critical to everything that goes on on Earth. 
So when we take some salt and put it in our in a cup of water, that salt breaks up into two ions. One happens to be positive, one happens to be negative. And the reason that happens is because the water itself is like a little magnet. It's got this positive end, this negative end. If water didn't do that, if water was neutral, then things like salt and so on wouldn't dissolve in water. And quite honestly, nothing would grow in soil because it couldn't pick up the salt. Like the whole, the whole biochemistry, everything that goes on on earth would have to be completely different. Hmm. The, the chemistry of that water molecule is, is absolutely critical this, to this process. When we look at what happens in soil, we also find places that have charges. So the water is charged and particularly the clay and the organic matter are also charged. Things like sand and silt are not. And if you understand that difference, then a lot of things in soil make a lot of sense. So for instance, if I have sandy soil and I put in these nutrients and all the nutrients are salts, just like our table salts. So the nitrates and the phosphates and the ammonium, they're all salts really. They stick to clay because they're charged. So the clay is charged. It's like a little magnets. All these salts are charged. They stick to the clay. And that's why clay soil is very nutritious because it actually holds on to these things. Uh, organic matter is also charged. So organic matter and humus also holds on to all these things. Sand and silt doesn't. Sand and silt have no charges. So when we put fertilizer on a sandy soil and then we water it, the water just washes it right through. The nutrients stick with, to the water and move with the water while the pores are so big in sand, it just water just runs through it. So the nutrients are lost. Whereas if I take that same fertilizer and put it on clay soil, it sticks to the clay. It doesn't go anywhere. Right. And clay and organic matter both have those properties. And that's actually one of the really important values of organic matter. Organic matter holds on to those nutrients, especially in sandy soil. Right. We have sandy soil with no organic matter. It doesn't hold on to anything. And if it doesn't hold on to these nutrients, plant roots can't get nutrients. So the interesting thing is that plant roots are able to pull off these nutrients off the clay particles and out of the water. But the whole thing only works because water is able to come along and these charged particles, these salts go into the water and attach to the water, move along with the water until it gets to the root. And then it moves from the water into the root. Okay. So the, that simple charged molecule, that water, is really what allows the fertilizer to get to the roots. Right. And when I'm talking about fertilizer, I'm talking in general here that, you know, if you use an organic material, a fish emulsion, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, your compost pile, they're all producing these salts and they're all moving through the soil with the water. Right. And... So that's how the whole thing works. So it's, it becomes really critical. It also explains why having a little more organic matter is so useful in soil, right? Because it holds on to the nutrients and right. makes them available to plants. Well, and I guess it, it shows that it, it, there's a certain amount of plants, a minimum amount that plants need. Yeah. And you're, what would you say? 5% uh, organic matter. What, you know, um, that's, uh, I guess, for a 5% organic matter that ensures that to some extent that that minimum amount of not only water, but the nutrients that are dissolved in the water are there. That's um, right. Does that, does that make sense? Yep. Um, that's, that's so, right. yeah, what the main thing I took away from this was to, to think about the nutrients as magnets and the water as magnets and the clay and the organic matter are magnets that hold onto the water and the nutrient magnets. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? So if, if you've got the right, you know, a reasonably good composition of your soil, which you can amend, um, then you're going to have what you need. You're not going to have to keep adding these things. It's going to hang on to it.